just to save you being bored shitless, we didn't film us making some more sugar syrup, but we've got to bottle it up because tomorrow I'm going to go down to the scrub and actually give the, got some, um, I don't know, some small nukes that we'd cut off and the nectar had stopped flowing before they'd actually got any reserves. So I'm going to go down and give them something to eat and hopefully boost them up a bit. Hopefully they don't breed their asses off in the anticipation of more honey or more sugar. But anyway, something's got to happen because there's not much food down where they are. So I thought we'd put these containers together and go down and give them something to eat. Oh, I found out something else really cool. If you remember when we were making this sugar syrup and we had a discussion about how much would fit in this pot, it takes exactly 40 litres and 40 kilos of sugar and as you can see, it's quite full. So it's perfectly designed. <laughs> it is one kick-ass saucepan. That's a, that'd be a bloody huge casserole, wouldn't it, in there? Holy shit. Or a big pot of rice. <laughs> so we thought we'd better bottle this up before the ants eat it all. Un interesting with ants. I wonder if they're related to, like, because ants only have a queen. They have one ruler in their little group. And then they have paths that they follow. They're sort of related to the bees, I'd say. I guess they're an insect too, aren't they? Just they didn't, they got ripped off. They didn't get any wings. Plus they don't make honey, they make other, they don't. So they're not much use to us, are they? So anyway, we've got our sugar water on board, which is really good, because we're down here in the scrub where the girls are getting a bit blooming hungry because it hadn't rained here for, I don't know, three months or something, which is kind of crazy. Normally we'll get some decent summer thunderstorms, but we haven't had nothing. There's a bit of pollen going, but there's hardly any nectar. So I've got these young splits here that I thought would have had enough strength to get through the winter, but I'm just going to bolster them up with a bit of sugar water, which is what you saw us putting in these pots the other day. Got me cool feeders. Hang on, we'll have a show you them. Get them out. <laughs> These are the same feeders that we put on with those little box bees we got from the Bunyip boys. So I've just recycled them. Remember the little cool little cone pit? So the girls can't drown. So we'll put the sugar in here, put the cone in there, and pop it in the box. And they can have a bit of a feed, which will be good. And then hopefully they'll be all happy for the winter time. I'm talking about winter time, we were wondering what we were gonna film for the winter. And we're thinking, well, shit, what are we going to film? But we're kind of, we're having this crazy idea. Maybe we could get a crowdfunding page up. And so we're hoping that you guys could send us some emails and some feedback as to whether you'd be interested in us going for a trip around the world for beekeepers. I don't know, hell, we could go to the top of the New York, is it New York? Somewhere in New York, there's some cool beekeepers on top of a building, I reckon. Anyway, send us some emails, send us some feedback. Let us know if you'd be interested in doing some crowdfunding. And who knows, the Bush Bee Man might be in the USA. I got all motivated to wash my suit. Left my cigarette lighter in the bloody pocket, so I'm reckoning that's at the bottom of the wife's washing machine. So she'll be impressed. We've left the pine needles at home, so we're just gonna have to improvise and use a few gum leaves. That'd make us a bit Australian, wouldn't it? In that, have you ever been at the campfire? You know when you're at a campfire and you're sitting around the campfire and you, wherever you sit, the bloody smoke ends up blowing in your direction? Is that just me or does that happen to other people? That's just a crap deal, I reckon, sometimes. Yeah. They look pretty quiet, some of them. Hopefully, not too late. That'll be the next thing, won't it? So we're just checking out what we're doing. We're only just, we're gonna take out a couple of frames because you saw earlier we had those feeders that we're gonna pop in here. So of course, we've gotta make a bit of room. So we'll just take out a couple of frames that they don't actually need anyway at the minute. We don't want to, you don't want to be feeding sugar to them too late in the season because um, then they've got to run around and get that. They don't really like doing that. You want to fatten them up before it gets too cold. Well, these ladies have got a little bit of honey happening. See how relaxed they are. Remember when we put them in here? I don't know if you remember. These are those crazy black little suckers that we've got on the other plot. And they were completely bonkers. But look at them. They're just beautiful now. So the only thing is I can't really see any brood. That's what we're here to try and encourage them to breed up a bit. 
others, of course. They're not stupid. They know that if there's not a big food supply, they're not going to make too many, too many more of themselves. But hopefully, we get a little bit of... Um, oh, she's got a bit of brood, yeah. Hopefully, we get a bit of red mallee flowering soon. And then that'll just tide them over. Cool. So these girls look like they've done a little bit better. Maybe they had a bit of extra workforce when we started off. See how, much, how busy they are. Yeah, so they're starting to build a bit of, they're starting to work on this new comb over here. But anyway, it won't matter. We'll just shake them off, make some room for our feeders, and they can have something to eat. Very high tech, as you can see. <laughs> Although, we did get real excited. We even put a tap in our drum. So that was pretty groovy. So I've tried a few different ideas with feeders. I've actually had, you know, the, you can get the ones that are in a, basically a Coke bottle, and they sit on the outside, and you put them in the mouth of the hive. But here in, here in the bush, the jolly ants have a bit more of a feed than the, than the bees, and that creates a hell of a mess. So then you've got, not only you've got hungry bees, you've got a hive full of ants, so that's kind of crazy. Whereas these ones are inside, and the ants, well, even if they do get in there, because you only get maybe the little sugar ants, maybe, but generally they don't smell it, and the girls get in there, run down this little tube, get a guts full of sugar, put it in their little storage unit, and basically they've got, well, I guess it's pretend honey, but anyway, keeps them alive gets them a bit motivated and hopefully get them psyched up for winter. So we'll pop this in here then the ladies can just crawl down that funnel, grab a bit of nectar, well artificial nectar really isn't it, which is kind of groovy and then they're going to put it in their little storage comb and then they'll have something to eat and hopefully then they'll get all excited and they'll go out and find a bit more pollen and breed up a few more ladies and then when we come back in a month or so before winter sets in they should be all happy. That's the plan anyway, but I've got a little newt box at home we could check out. So we might do that when we get home and see what they're doing. They've been, I did this about a week and a bit ago down there. And so we'll see what sort of, what sort of nectar they've decided to get. Oh, and this is just a one-to-one -one sugar mix too, by the way. So if you're wondering, if you want any technical terms, so it's pretty much one liter of water, one kilo of sugar. So anyway, of course you can make sugar patties if you want to, but then you just got to make it two to one and boil it longer. That's a whole nother saga. That's when the winter winter. But anyway, we won't worry about that today. <laughs> We thought we might poke our head in the top of these hives before we bugger off and show you what the bees, how they get into the feeder. Because it's actually pretty groovy. And they've actually got really quite excited now that they've got some nectar to feed on, or artificial nectar. Human in, human in, no hang on, what would that be? That'd be human given nectar. It's kind of crazy shit, isn't it? <laughs> Melting some sugar for them. Anyway, check this shit out. Check them out. They're running up and down here having a little, having a little guts full of food. And then they're going to put it over here and give themselves some, because obviously they can't exactly use the, they can't exactly use that sugar syrup straight up. So they'll take it out and they'll put it in their frames and then they'll fan it off, thicken it up, and then they'll use it to build up some strength. So we'll put these little ladies back to bed. Very good. Well, I don't know. We'll have to come back in a week or so. It's amazing how much sugar syrup they can drink. I mean, there's three litres in one of those containers and they'll polish it off in a week, I reckon, without any trouble. Well, probably quicker with it. Depends on how many bees there is, obviously. This one over here would probably take a fair while because they're pretty small. But anyway, hopefully that gives them a bit more enthusiasm. As you can see, that's livening them up. They were, they were asleep here when we got here. So now they've got themselves a bit excited out looking for some pollen. And then they should breed a bit more brood and get into good stead for the winter. That's the plan. <laughs>